Question two had four parts. Uh, the instructions say simplify completely, um, meaning we're not going to leave any giant ones lingering across the numerator and denominator, so eliminate all common factors. Um, and your answer may only contain positive exponents. So honestly these are these are problems that many of us are starting to get we're getting closer but we're still not at what I would call classroom mastery um, so keep going um, remember the practice that you need may not be the practice that other people need so if you're aware that you're still struggling with these kinds of problems seek them out make them up uh, try them uh, bring questions to me and I can I can look at them with you and say, yeah, that's that's good. You did those correctly. Um, but also GeoGebra and OneNote are great tools for just making up problems and checking them. Uh, the OneNote version that's in currently in Windows 10 will actually do math for you, and I've demonstrated in that class many times. So let's start with uh, part A. And I'm, I'm not going to go crazy. I'm just going to look at a couple things here. One of the things I'm looking at is the fact that I do have these this set of parentheses. So I know that something's being squared and this is also being squared. So when I square these things that means I have you know two copies of those right there's so each everything inside of the the red parentheses there's two of them and there's two of them because these are being raised to the second power so if I was to just kind of expand that numerator I could say look it's a 5x squared and then another 5x squared that are being multiplied and there's a 2x cubed and another 2x cubed. So expanding that kind of helps me gain a little bit better insight into what the numerator is. And I'm just going to rewrite my denominator. It's a 50x to the fourth power. So that's one tool that you can use is just use um, use the fact that you can expand, write them out in expanded notation, right? Showing the repeated multiplication, right? I'm, what am I multiplying here? I'm multiplying 5x squares. How many of them do I have? I have two of them. So I can expand that out and write the 5x squared, 5x squared. I can also write the 2x cubed, 2x cubed. So if I look across my numerator now, there's um, several things, numbers that I can deal with, right? So I'm multiplying a 5, a 5, a 2, and a 2. And I'm just going to deal with that. That's actually 25 times 4 if I was to multiply them. And I could do it in a bunch of ways. I could also go, you know, 5 times 2 is 10. It's 10 times 10. But at any, at any rate, it doesn't matter the order that I multiply those four factors. It ends up having a product of 100. So in my numerator, I have 100. Uh, the other thing that I have in my numerator is I have lots of factors of x. In fact, there's, you know, um, I'll, I'll circle the, there's one, two factors of x, two more factors of x. That's 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 12. Uh, that's not right. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Oh, there's 10 of them. I overcounted. So I've got 10 factors of 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 10 factors of 8. So I can combine those. So now now I, I did an expanding. Now I'm, gonna, um, I'm going to um, contract those, right? Bring them all together. So I can just write that as x to the 10th power. Now in my denominator I've got a 50 and I have x to the 4th power. So there's a couple giant ones. Um, I can see them um, and I'm pretty proficient at dealing with them. One of them is I've got 100 over 50. 100 in the numerator, 50 in the denominator. So I can rewrite that as a 2 over 1. The other thing that I have is I have 10 factors of x in the numerator, and I've got 4 factors of x in the denominator. Uh, the shortcut is I know that that's x to the 6th power. So my final answer is 2x to the 6th power. I don't want to leave anything uh, to chance here, so I'm going to really be very explicit in my instructions. So if I look at this numerator, literally if I expand it, there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 factors of x. And in my denominator, I've got 1, 2, 3, 4 factors of x. So when I look at this, I can form this giant one bringing 4 factors of x from the top and 4 factors of x in the denominator together. And I'm left with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 factors of x. That's the 6 factors of x that I have in my, my answer. So that's a pretty inefficient way of dealing with those. So when I see x to the positive 10th over x to the positive 4th, I can subtract 10 minus 4. Um, is uh, 6, and the reason why I'm subtracting is because it's it's the number of factors that I'm counting that I'm pulling together and creating a giant one. So part A is 2x uh, to the 6th power. I don't like how I 
spot. Oh, by the way, yeah, write these answers on the line here. So this is 2x to the sixth power. Let's go to part B. So for part B, there's a lot of different ways we could approach this. And uh, I'm not real picky about which way you pick, um, just as long as you're being coherent, rational, and you're, you're, you're really following the rules faithfully and you understand the, what the quantities are you're dealing with. So I want to start by looking at this y to the negative fifth and y to the seventh. Again, I see that everything across here is multiplication. These are def This is a monomial. Um, later on in, out in math two or math three when you're looking at different terms, be careful. Don't overgeneralize here, but this is all, it's an eight times something times something times. So I'm looking at this multiplication and I can simplify this y to the fifth y to the seventh. And in fact, the most efficient way to do that is just say, look, that's y to the second power. In my numerator, there's a y to the second, and I'm done with that. Now, if you don't see that yet, you could look at it as, hey, I've got a y to the negative fifth times a y to the seventh. And you might say, for example, oh, isn't that y to the seventh over y to the fifth? And, and you'd be right. And again, you can see there's a giant one that's forming with five factors of y in the numerator and five factors of y in the denominator. And when I write those all out, expand them out, I'm left with two factors of y in the denominator. Uh, the other thing that I can do is I could just recall from the simplest of examples, right? If I have a base of a and I raise it to the third power and I multiply it by a base of a to the fifth power, that's going to be eight factors of a, right? In other words, that's a to the three plus five power. So I, I understand the arithmetic here, right? I'm going to add these exponents to answer the question, how many factors of y do I have? And I have two. And because it was a positive two when I added them, I left it in the numerator. The other thing that I have in the numerator still is this number eight. And I'm going to write that down. This is this number eight. Now, this business right here, this is something to the negative power. Right? You can see it's it's 8x um, raised to the negative second power. So I'm immediately going to take that and just write it in my denominator. It's 8x in parentheses, and that's getting squared. Now, <laughs> if I look at that in slow motion, just to kind of like, where, where, where is that coming from, Mr. Roberts? So look, if I have uh, 8 x to the negative second in parentheses, and I want to deal with this negative exponent, I can deal with it by multiplying it by a giant 1. So if I multiply it by 8x squared over 8x squared, again, notice what I'm multiplying by. This is just 1, and when I multiply by 1, I'm not changing the value. I'm just changing its appearance. So I'm multiplying by 1. In my numerator now, if you look at what I have, I've got this um, 8 x to the negative second times 8x to the positive second. And when I multiply those, I get 8x to the 0 power. And we know that 8x to the 0 power equals 1. So what I have here is I have a 1 in the numerator, and I have an 8x getting squared in my denominator. So go back to the problem, and you can see that's exactly what I did, right? I wrote these, right? It was 8x to the negative second power. I wrote that in the denominator with a po positive exponent. So 8x to the negative second becomes 1 over 8x to the second. So probably a little bit of expansion is called for here. I don't know that it's entirely necessary, but in my numerator, I've got 8y squared. In my denominator, I've got an 8x and an 8x. Notice the difference between the numerator and denominator, right? In the numerator, what's getting squared, it's just the y. So I've got an 8 and then yy. And the denominator, what's getting squared, is the 8x. So I've got an 8x times another 8x factor pair. So that's 8x, 8x. Um, at this point, I, I want to just leave it here for just a minute because I can see e immediately that there is this giant one. You can see the 8 over 8. So I can look at that and sort of, that has a value of 1. So it's not contributing anything to my answer. And I, in fact, I need to get rid of that. So what am I left with? Well, I'm left with y squared in the numerator. In my, in my denominator, I've got an 8. And I have two factors of y, right? 8x squared, y. So I've got y squared over 8x squared. y, y over 8xx. 
Part C, I hope that you can kind of look at it and see, first of all, there's a distinction here, right? One of them has parentheses around it, one does not. So one is just 3xx. The other one in the denominator is a 3x, 3x, but those are both to the negative 1 power. So I want to deal with the negative exponent first. In fact, I, I don't always do it this way, but I like to do it, particularly in this case, I will. So I'm going to clear this negative exponent by multiplying by 3x in parentheses squared. 3x in parentheses squared. And I've selected this because um, I'm trying to uh, get rid of this negative exponent. Now if I look at my denominator, I can see that I've got this 3x to the negative second power, and I'm multiplying that by 3x to the second power. Well, that gives me 3x to the 0 power, right? Negative 2 plus 2 is 0. So in my denominator, I have 3x in parentheses to the second power, to the 0 power. I guess I'll write that. Well, I know that that equals exactly the number 1. So that's why I selected 3x squared, because I knew that it would neutralize the negative exponent. Now, if I turn my attention to what's remaining in the numerator, I can see I've got a 3x squared, but then I also have a 3x, 3x. So I need to be really intentional about this. They're not the same. One of them is a 3 and then an x and an x, right, 3x squared. The other one is a 3x, 3x. So I can look at it this way. Um, in my, then this is all in the numerator. I don't even need to write it as a fraction now because this is all in the numerator. In my numerator, I have exactly three factors of three. So that's a three times a three times a three. So it goes from three to nine to 27. So my answer has the number 27. And then I have one, two, three, four factors of x, right? You can count them. There's an x times an x. That's x squared. This would make x squared to the third, and this is x to the fourth. So I could write this as 27 times x to the fourth power. And that multiplication dot's not necessary. I would probably just write it as 27x to the fourth. Part D of this question um, does have a negative exponent in the denominator. Well, let's be really intentional here. It's not 3x that's getting raised to the negative second power. It's just the x. 3 lives in my denominator, but you can see that I've got this x to the negative second power. At this point, i got to be honest. I, th I think we're getting to a point where we understand that those two factors of x, I'm just going to relocate to the numerator. The, the mechanism for doing that is to multiply by a giant 1 in the form of x squared over x squared. And when I multiply by x squared over x squared, these x squareds in the denominator, right, x to the negative second and x to the positive second, make x to the 0, which equals 1. Uh, and I'm left with two factors of x up in the numerator. Um, I'm kind of taking this shortcut now. I'm just looking at it saying, hey, I've got x to the negative second in the denominator. Those two factors of x, I'm just jumping up to the numerator. So when I look at the numerator now, I can see I've got um, one, two factors of x and two more factors of x. So in my numerator right now, I'm looking at a 6, and then I've got x to the fourth power. In the denominator, I've got a 3, and I've got a y to the fourth power. So I ask you to simplify completely, and you look at the 6 and the 3, right? 6 divided by 3 is 2. Um, so I've got that there's a common factor of 3 in both the top and bottom. So I've got this 2 times 3, that's my 6, over a 3. And you can see that forms this giant 1. So for my final answer, I'm left with 2 times x to the 4th, that's my numerator. And my denominator, so let me write that down, 2x to the 4th power. And the denominator now, because I got rid of this um, this 3 factor with the, with the numerator, my denominator is just a y to the 4th power. So 2x to the 4th over y to the fourth.